Hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome to tonight's self-love sermon. It's your girl, Allison Rozelle, also known as Coach Roz. So, we are having our self-love sermon. I don't know why my computer is so far away from me, but um, I am very, very excited about tonight's message. I'm always excited about our messages, but tonight is a bit... Is, especially special <laughs> if you want to say it that way it's especially special and the reason why is um, because I'm going to start touching on some subjects that are very near and dear to my heart as it relates to being over 40 and starting over because I've been doing a lot of reading regarding this particular subject because I am over 40 now um, and I'm also an empty nester. My son has left the nest. So these are things that um, I'm just learning a lot more about myself. And um, it's just different things that I'm, I'm seeing that um, a lot of people are asking about and, and needing to know about. So I just wanted to kind of touch on a few things, if I may, um, tonight for tonight's self-love sermon. So, it's one particular site that I wanted to reference. So, let me get it pulled up. I should have been prepared, I know. <laughs> so, before we get started, I just want us to just all just take a deep breath. <sighs> yeah. Because you may have had a long day, even though it's Sunday. Some people still work on Sunday, you know. Um, if you work a traditional Monday through Friday, 9 to 5, you've been off all weekend. But Sunday is usually the day that gives everybody anxiety, especially Sunday evening, because they know, got to go to work tomorrow. So, I want to ease some of that. Hopefully, we can just have a little fun. How about that? So, we're talking about starting over um, at 40. And it's really interesting um, that this particular subject has come to the forefront on this moment because um, we are in the midst of the beautiful full moon energy, full moon in Scorpio. Um, and I was just reading a little bit according to Mystic Mama because I do I do love reading this Mystic Mama especially when it comes to whenever there's a new moon and full moon because I'm learning a lot more about the meanings and what they what's coming because I used to wonder sometimes why my energy would shift either in a good way or a not so good way and I'm finding out that how women, especially with our cycles and our bodies, a lot of times is in alignment with the cycles of the moon. So um, the full moon in Scorpio brings about gifts of diving deep, dying to the past, finding renewal. Doesn't that sound like starting over? Um, and powerful life force energy releasing releasing um, shadowy subconscious material so basically renewal releasing that's the main premise of this full moon and that is very powerful because we are a lot of us in that energy of renewal of starting over so we'll talk about it a little bit more and get a little more in depth about it so what brought me to this was, I was reading this article. Um, it's by a, a man named Peter Fritz. Never heard of him, but I just happened to Google, you know, starting over at 40. So his article um, is on a website called startupbros.com, which is it's really interesting. If you have the time to go read it, I might post a link to it if you want to take a look at it. Um, but it's called it's Six Profound Reasons Why Being Over 40 Will Make You Finally Start That Business. And you know that's what I'm all about, right? <laughs> so I was reading about it, and he said some very profound things. So it kind of gave me the inspiration to write um, out what I wanted to talk about tonight. 
um, because he talks about the different things and the way that you feel, you know, after 40 and everything else um, and how this would be a good time for you to, you know, if you had a business venture to go ahead and get it started while you're after you're you're either at or a little after 40. So what I read here, it was good material. And like I said, I'm gonna post a link so you can read it for yourself because it is really good to know that type of stuff. So for me, especially when we get into mothers, when we're starting over after 40, it can be both easy and hard. Um, it can be easy for us because now we have freedom from the mommy duties that we once had. We don't really have that anymore. Um, we're in a place now where we don't really care about what other people think <laughs> anymore. Because it's so weird. Um, I was once told that when I got into my 30s, that I was going to start caring less and less. And it really didn't start hitting me. I don't know about you, but it really didn't start hitting me until um, I forgot to put my phone on Do Not Disturb so my notifications won't come through. But anyway, we'll work past it. Um, so anyway, when I got about 35... I would say 35 was when I really started hitting that peak of mm, starting to not really give a damn what you got to say to me kind of feeling. And then once I hit that 40 threshold, I was like, forget y'all. This is me. <laughs> so, yeah, when you get into that 40 realm, yeah, the people's opinions start to mean less and less um, to you. Um, and then we have the great... Um, amount of life lessons and experiences to help guide us through the rest of our lives um, because many of us have been through a lot of things we I mean you do what you do in like your 20s and your 30s I mean your teens too you know you do things that you're like mm, probably shouldn't have done that but oh well it's done you know so with that being said release that if it's something that you did in your teens, in your 20s, in your 30s, that you're carrying with you into your 40s and it's interfering with your quality of life, in this full moon in Scorpio, let it go. Release it into the world. Poof! Don't let it matter. Because it doesn't. It doesn't matter. What it did is it gave you a powerful lesson to take to take you into your 40s so you know not to sit and repeat those certain patterns anymore to just press forward and and keep going right so that's what we that was the easy part the hard part is at some point sometimes we have to make new friends we have to let old friends go or we don't let them go they just leave um I've had friends that I didn't let them go, but uh, I guess divinely they were let go, you know, and released from my life for whatever reason. And sometimes when I've interacted with them now, I can see why. And I'm thankful that they were let go and released from my life because we're not on the same page at all, at all. And, you know, as much as I'm, I may still love them, had to. It was necessary. So finding new circles with like-minded people, um, sometimes that can be kind of difficult. Uh, but it's not impossible to find. What you have to do is you have to purposely seek out those people that you vibe with, that, you know, are in alignment with what you think and feel and not even that but people who will challenge you to go higher um because you don't want people that are going to be satisfied with you just staying in one place you want people that are going to challenge you and encourage you to go higher in life so then that's what i mean by finding like-minded people you don't want people that are just going to be yes men or yes women 
who are going to allow you to continue to play small, allow you to not walk in your power, and everything else. You want someone, you want people who will be in alignment with your beliefs, but at the same time, give you things to think about. Give you things to, to kind of like, oh, I never thought of it like that. So maybe I might want to go back and do some rethinking on that. You never know. Um, but it isn't that easy because, you know, let's face it. Once we've gotten to this point, we're pretty set in our ways. So, you know, learning new people and new habits of those people can be a little challenging at times. But it's not impossible. Don't let that be your excuse. Don't you do it. <laughs> Don't you do it. Um, and then, again, with us being mommies, we have to figure out ways to stop worrying about our kids and what they're doing and put the focus back on us. Finally, back on us. So we aren't going to worry about, I mean, you're always going to worry about your kids. You're always going to worry about them. They're your babies. You know, to not think about them, to not, you know, wonder if they're okay. Like right now, I'm wondering, did my son eat today? Did he really eat today? Because <laughs> he'll go all day and work and not eat. And I fuss at him all the time. You need to eat. So, as a mommy, it happens. We do it. It's just part of it. But I'm saying this because now we can shift our focus on us. Yay! <laughs> Which is hard because we're not used to it. We've spent a great deal of time of being caregivers and people pleasers. And, you know, we want to give our best and be our best for the people that we love. But we didn't always get what we gave out in return. Right? And that's just not as mothers, just as women. A lot of times we do that. So you have a lot of things to think about. So you, you know, get to focus on yourselves. Um, and that's, like I said, it's really hard. Um, you may not really know where to start when you're starting over. And that's okay. Sometimes you just don't know. You kind of have to go through the motions. But you have to ask yourself those clarifying questions. You know, you don't know what to start when starting over. So you're like, do I quit my job so I can start a new business? Do I take out the loan for a business? Or do I start, you know, dating now? Since the dating pool is getting smaller and smaller. Because <laughs> I don't know about you, but I find it very difficult to date over 40. It just is. I thought that it wouldn't be this hard, but it is. It's it's mad hard. Um, so here are three things that I came up with that may help you in the starting over process. Number one, think about where you've been and where you want to go next in your life. Yeah. Kind of take a little inventory. Where have you been in your life? Where What brought you to this point? in your life? Where have you been? What are your experiences? Um, what are the things like, okay, been there, done that. I don't want any more of it. Let me go over to this side and do something else. So that's what I'm saying. Think about where you've already been in life and where you want to go next, right? Do you want to own your own business? Do you want to go back to school? Do you want to put yourself out there in dating and in Sign up for like a dating app or website, which I'm probably going to do myself pretty soon. You know, where's your dream destination for your life? Something to think about when you're starting over, right? Number two, if money wasn't an issue, what would you be doing? I mean, seriously, if you didn't have to worry about money, let's say money was falling from the skies. And you could take as much of it as you want and need to do whatever you want and need to do, right? What a way that, woo, that would be beautiful. <laughs> but let's say money wasn't an object and you had the ability to get whatever you needed to do whatever you wanted to do. So if, that's, if it wasn't an issue, what would you be doing? How would you live? Would you sell your current home and get you a condo? 
you know, and live like in the like downtown or midtown of the city that you're in? Um, would you buy an RV and just hit the open road and just travel and see where the road takes you? That would be nice. I would love to do that. Would you start a nonprofit for battered women or for, you know, homeless people or, or you know, anything like that? What would you do? If money weren't an issue, because a lot of times that keeps us now from doing certain things. Oh, I don't have the money. Oh, I don't have the money. And like I talked about last week, a lot of times it's really not a matter of us not having the money. Um, was it last week? I know it was with a fake fear um, sermon. But it nevertheless, a lot of times... We say, we use money as an excuse to not do something. So we'll say, oh, I don't have the money. And we'll leave it at that. Not, oh, I'll save the money so I can go do what I want to do. Or not, um, well, if I would stop going to Starbucks. <laughs> and I hesitated on that because of what's going on right now with Starbucks in present time, but I still use them as an example. If I stop going to Starbucks every day for my coffee and take my coffee from home to work. If I stop eating lunch, eating out for lunch or dinner or whatever. If I stopped um, getting my nails done so often, start doing it myself and just save a little money Look for ways to do that, to save where you can. Like, if if your thing is travel, if money weren't an issue, you would travel more, then get with someone who's like a travel agent and then find packages where you can make payments on your destination of wherever you're going. So if you let's say you want to take a cruise, like I would love to do an Alaskan cruise. So I want to talk to somebody that can help me with putting together a package for myself to take an Alaskan cruise and see, you know, if if I can't pay it all at one time, can I make payments on it, right? Can I do, like, monthly payments or, like, they break it up in so many payments before the last payment is due? You know, how will we do that? But find those ways to do it. So if money weren't an issue, what would you be doing? If you didn't allow that to hold you back, what would you be doing? What would your life look like if money weren't an issue? How free would you allow yourself to be? That's number two. Number three, I have to ask this because so many of us are living in fear and we allow other things, other people, our current circumstances to hold us back. So now I have to ask you, yeah you, the person that's watching this, do you love yourself enough to say yes to your life? Do you? And I mean this because if you're starting over at 40 and you're looking to renew your life, you're starting over, you're like, all right, this time it's all about me. I'm about to do the doggone thing. I'm going to open my business or I'm going to go back to school or I'm going for that promotion that I want. I'm going to start investing in real estate, start building multiple streams of income, whatever it is. Do you love yourself enough to say yes to your life? Whatever you're being called to do, do you trust God enough? Do you trust the God in you and the connection from spirit to your spirit enough to say yes? Do you? Because that's what it comes down to. It's all about self-love. When you're talking about your purpose, when you're talking about walking in your, in your purpose, your destiny, and getting there, it's all about you saying yes to yourself. You may have been rejected by other people. You may have been turned down for money, turned down for a job, turned down for a relationship or whatever. But when was the last time you said yes to yourself? To yourself. 
Say yes to you. Say yes to your destiny. Say yes to your purpose. Say yes to your passion. When was the last time that you said yes? Because if you're truly, truly serious about starting over, about starting over and having a new life for yourself, you got to say yes with your heart and your soul. Say yes. Say yes, I accept it. I accept the challenge. I accept, you know, come what may, because now it's my time. Now I'm ready to do my thing. I'm tired of sitting back in the shadows. I'm tired of not having the life that I've always wanted. I'm tired of always having to apologize for who I am. I'm tired of playing small. I'm tired of hiding behind other people and a title. I'm tired of hiding my gifts. I'm tired. Say yes to yourself for once. Don't worry about what other people have to say. We're over 40. Why do we care? At, uh, at 42, about to be 43, why on earth do I care what anybody has to say about me? Do I care whether people who say they know and love me, whether or not they support me in what I do? I don't care because my purpose is greater than that. It's bigger than that. It spans further than that. If I sit and focus on that small, small part and percentage, I'll never get anywhere. I'll never accomplish anything. And the same thing goes for you. You have to say yes to yourself. You have to say yes to your destiny, to the purpose that has been placed within you. Say yes. And you won't regret it. You won't regret it. So with that being said, I'm going to talk about, just for a few seconds, the master class. Yes, it is happening again on May 3rd. I am hosting an encore of the Get Your Hustle On master class. So you can sign up. I've got the event on this page. You just click the link and sign up and bam there you are and you just have to be there at eight o'clock eastern standard time on thursday may 3rd it's to get your hustle on master class if you're ready to say yes to your life if you're ready to start over then this is the thing that you would love for you to start with it start start somewhere start opening yourself up to the possibilities of other ways you can live your life instead of the same of what you've been settling for. You don't have to settle anymore. You don't have to settle anymore. It's time. It's time. All right, lovelies. That's all I got. I love you. I love you. I love you. Thank you so much for joining me. I wish you peace and blessings and have a wonderful, wonderful evening and a wonderful week. Blessings.